Good morning, traders, fellow privateers. Welcome to the uh, Asian preview, North American wrap from uh, your your uh, friends at uh, Privateer FX. <clears throat> Got a dollar Brazil chart here. We don't really trade this much. Um, Sorry, I'm going to be getting a lot of alerts here because I'm logged into my Bloomberg, but uh, just bear with me. Um, you can just see this uh, parabolic run it's it's had. And let's not forget that, here's a weekly, let's not forget that we had Argentina first, where that fell, dollar arge exploded. Um, and then we had, get this alert out of the way, then we had a, uh, a mini currency crisis in Turkey, and now it looks like Brazil is next, which could lead to some issues with uh, Mexico and, you know, some other of the neighboring uh, LATAM currencies. If we take a look at the big picture, we've got higher U.S. rates. This is starting to really impact any of these countries that have borrowed dollars because now they are paying a higher rate uh, as U.S. rates increase. Um, you know, I think that's that's kind of the main catalyst for this. Obviously, in, in, in Brazil, there's a, a lot of – in Argentina and Turkey, there's a lot of government and central bank uh, – disagreement between uh, the different parties, but um, a couple of the analysts came out today and they're expecting new highs in this dollar Brazil. So I would watch very closely because this, you know, as equities, I believe the NASDAQ made a new all-time high today. Let's pop over to the NASDAQ and yeah, you can see that it's a new all-time closing high today. So the risk is on big time. The FANG stocks are just going through the roof and have attributed, I believe, 50% of the 80% of the NASDAQ move in the past uh, past 12 months. So you've got risk on in stocks, but then, you you know, anytime I see something like this dollar Brazil, and, you know, we'll pop over to dollar max, because I do think that the... This could sneak up on people where you've had dollar, dollar arge, dollar max. You know, dollar max has been, uh, you know, trading above tw the 20 handle. Took out these old weekly highs. Let's take a look at the daily. Did have a reverse lower day today, but, you know, these are, this is new territory for dollar max for a very long time. Uh, we have these old old weekly highs, at 2056, and then the you know the big highs that we saw uh, at the end of 2017 up at 22. So the NAFTA, you know, this is mainly NAFTA driven, um, and it's 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 purely headline trading. Take a look and see what Dollar Cad did. Dollar Cad had kind of a crazy day. Uh, let's just go to the hourly. Yeah, it sold off on some positive NAFTA news here below the, the these moving average confluences that are between 42, 129, and 42, and 56. We're right back on these levels now. It sold off and then reversed aggressively higher. These currencies are really, really difficult to trade. I would stay away from them. Um, pop over to Euro. Euro still looks pretty, pretty good. It's a pretty constructive daily bar. Uh, our MACDs turned up a few days ago, um, so that was kind of the signal here. This this kind of bullish engulfing day, and we haven't really looked back. You know, I've got targets up here at 119 handle. Um, it got up to 117.96 today. There's some options expiries. I could see this continuing higher. Australian dollar after the GDP uh, or after the data last night. Um, are, you know, it's it's very strong. I think a lot of people have this trade wrong. 
Um, we've been bearish. We've been punished. You know, we were bearish in here. Worked out okay. Then it went sideways for a while. And as soon as we got back above these old highs at 76, 76, uh, 10 area, we, we, we took them back and unfortunately didn't go long. But it, it, we have trade balance coming out. This looks like it's kind of starting a new uptrend. We've got Moving averages up here, we got the half Fibonacci. Yeah, I could see this going another 100 points before we get a correction. Um, you know, not much else on the on the data front. Um, we're holding some long euros. Um, we are paying, like I said, very close attention to what is um, happening in Latin America. It's always an emerging market currency that starts it. Emerging market currencies, the bond market, their stock markets. When you start seeing these things come unglued, it filters into the rest of the, um, you know, the, ri the risk tolerance, risk uh, appetite. And you know, once once some of these carry trades come unglued, it uh, it can all happen very fast because, as we all know, the liquidity in the emerging market space, both currencies, equities, and bonds is uh it's a very small window window to get out and uh long em has been a, a favorite a kind of a darling for the past couple of years in the, the low interest rate environment um you know now you're even getting you've been hearing some hawkish comments out of uh out of uh the ecb the past couple of days hence the the rally in euro the black swan event for me is when the boj turns hawkish because that would be massively disruptive to their bond market. Their currency, the knee jerk would be to buy it and then it might collapse. So, you know, this is a long term type trade idea that I'm talking about, but it all starts in the emerging markets. It's all about, uh, you know, dollar, uh, dollar funding. And when, when interest rates go up, it's in U.S. interest rates go up, it becomes very problematic for a lot of these emerging market countries. So something to keep an eye on. It's not, you know, not imminent, but uh, we're, we're watching it closely. Uh, I'll leave it at that. You'll hear from us on the, in the European Open. Good luck and uh, keep your powder dry because I, I don't think your session is going to be too exciting. Cheers.